Hello everyone, this is Vertic Designs here. For this video, we're going to take a look at how to make a Fortnite thumbnail. The one that we're going to be making is going to look like this. And it is more a professional and good looking thumbnail. It also works with many other colours like blue. Blue is really easy to work with. You want to make sure you have at least a screenshot or an image of a character from the game. So for me, where I got mine from is a website which has 3D models. The reason I use this is so I can get a closer view of the actual player and it didn't ruin the quality. Okay, so if you look in the description, there'll be two links to two different websites. The first one is called Sketchfab and this is a website where people can upload their 3D models and 3D renders. These are actually really cool because you can spectate around them and look at the object in a much closer view. This is something I wish the game actually had itself where you can spectate the item but since this feature is not in the game you can get it from the website if you want to. Right now it doesn't have many models but I can imagine if you all show some support and go over to this website to help the creators they will be making more. So like I mentioned before, the reason I use this website is because not only can you spectate around the player, so if you wanted to, you can even go all the way up to the face of the character and look at it in certain angles, whichever way you wanted to. You can see you have all these options here where it is pre-rendered and you can even take off some of the filters like the gloss. And the other website is called Polycount. It is really high quality posters of the game and it makes it a lot better for the thumbnail because these are a lot larger and when you scale them down they don't lose as much quality. The last thing that you can do is obviously play the game, have a few games and take some screenshots like I did. It is really easy even for someone like me who doesn't play this game a lot. You can take some really nice pictures of the game and you can cut them out for the thumbnail. But if you all wanted to, I can put a download link to these textures and images. This is the one that I created. I also use this one where I remove the player and I use this as the background. The first thing you want to do is you want to create a new project. So if you go to file, new, and in here you set this to 1280 by 720. Leave it on 75 for the resolution and have it on transparent. Press OK. If you go to the bucket tool, you can either click on here or press G on your keyboard and that will take you to the bucket tool. Left click and create the solid. The next thing that you want to do is you want to drag in your screenshot of the background or some sort of material for the background. I'm going to be using this. Go to filter, go down to blur, Gaussian blur and set it to five pixels. You press OK. We're going to add two adjustment layers. So the first one is going to be a brightness and contrast. The brightness will be on 9 and the contrast will be on 57. The next adjustment we're going to go over to hue and saturation and we are going to set this one to 16. Next we're going to drag in the black edge effect. This one can be easily created. If you don't know how to do this you go to the brush tool. You can use the square brackets on your keyboard to make it larger. You create a new layer and you just go around the edges making sure that the color is on black and you just do this. I'm just going to drag this one down instead and I'm going to set it to soft light. I'm also going to turn down the opacity to 63. The next thing that we're going to do is create a new layer and this is going to be for the background colors. You want to right click on the bucket tool and go to the gradient tool. Once you've selected the gradient, you can go up here and change the color. What you want to do it is you want to set yours the same as mine. So this is the color code for it. If you'd like to get it exactly the same as mine. For the middle one, you want to set it to this and it is going to be 50% for the location, which is halfway. And for the last one, this one is more darker. So you want to set it to this color code right here. Once you've done that, you can then left click and drag this out to the side of the screen like so. Now that we've got this we are also going to right click on it, go to blending options, we're going to set a color overlay and the color for this is going to be 
A2FF. And you want to press OK. And then you want to set this to color. So we get this nice blue. Once you've done that, you press OK. And now we're going to create a purple. So create a new layer. And then you want to go to the bucket tool, click on color. And the color that you're going to be using is 3E006B. And that is this nice darkish purple. Press OK and left click on the screen. You want to set this one to color. And you want to set this one to color dodge. You want to also turn down the opacity of it to 83%. And then this one is going to be 80%. What we're going to do now is we're going to group these together. So if you click on the first one, hold shift and click on the bottom one and then drag these down to the folder icon. So the next thing that we're going to do for the thumbnail is we're going to add the character. Now, the first thing you want to do is remove the background like I've done. If you don't know how to do this, you can import it in a new project and you can use the magnetic lasso tool, which is this one right here. So we're going to start off here and just go around this image. You don't really have to worry about it if it goes wrong because we can always fix this and it is not very hard to do. You can manually plot down points if you wanted to, to help it to actually calculate where the outline is. Now that you're near the bottom, go down here and then go back to the first one. Now that you've done that, we're just going to fix up the selection a little bit. So what you want to do is you want to right click on the tool right here, go to the middle one and make sure you are selecting this option right here so you can add on to the selection. Once again, hold alt and just zoom in. You want to click on the line and add on to it. And if you wanted to, you don't have to go all the way back to the first dot. You can hold control and you can see the circle icon pops up and you can connect it back up. So to deselect, all you gotta do is hold Alt and click once, and then you can take it away from your selection. We're gonna fix up this bit here with the glasses. This time I didn't hold Alt, I just clicked on the line. And if you wanted to, you can connect it from here. Once again, hold Control, and that circle icon pops up. One here, we're gonna go ahead and add on to the line. This is looking decent right now. We just need to fix up this bit down here. So we're going to add on to this one. And hold control. I'm pretty happy with this now. So all you got to do is create yourself a mask by clicking on this icon and that will remove the background if yours is let's say like this where it's inverted all you got to do is press ctrl and i and that will invert it the next step is to right click on it go to convert smart object and now you can drag this okay so now that you've got your player all you got to do now is create yourself a light so if you hold alt and zoom out you can create a new layer put this one on top of the player and then you want to go up to the brush tool Set the color to white and just give yourself a little light effect just about there. And then you want to set this one to 60%. Go down to the shape tool, make sure that the fill is on none, have it on stroke and leave the stroke on 15 pixels. Drag it out from the corners. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are gonna press control T Make it a little bit smaller and then we're going to convert it to a small object. Once you've done that, press Ctrl T again and it's a lot easier now to snap it onto the edges. Now that you've done that, you want to go ahead and go on the selection tool, select this bit down here and you want to press Ctrl J. You want to put the first border underneath the player and the cutout is going to be on top. For the border, set this to soft light. And then for the top one, you want to also set this one to soft light, but you want to go to the eraser tool and just erase the edges so you can't see them. For the glass effect, this is something that I created. If you want a download to this, you can download it yourself. 
but I'm just going to import it into here and drag it to the left side. In here, you want to use the eraser tool again, and you can click on it to turn it into a layer. You can use the end square bracket to make it larger. And then you just want to erase the edges off. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and press control J, hold shift and drag it to this side of the screen. Do the same as last time, get rid of the edges. And now we're going to put these two together. So if you hold shift and click on the other layer, right click and convert smart object. And then what you want to do now is set this to linear burn. You want to make sure that this one is sitting on top of the actual player and the border. And for the very last effect, we're going to drag in this to turn it into a color burn. And this is going to sit underneath the player and all these other layers. And this one's going to be set to color burn. And this one is going to be on, let's say about 60%. Okay, so once again, we're going to group these together by clicking on the bottom one and holding shift and clicking on the top one, moving them down to the group. For the last one, we're going to add in some text. So to do this, all you got to do is go to the text tool, which is right here. You can drag this outwards and type in something. So like test, you want to select a font, which is more suitable or one that you like. So I personally like this one. You want to press Control T, drag these out, press Control J, move this above this one, type in your text and make it smaller. You can press Control A to select it all and then select a size just so you can see it. You can click on the top one and then hold Shift and then click on this one. Right click and go to Convert Smart Object. And then you want to press Control T and then you want to hold Control and drag these out just so we can get this cool 3D effect. You can go to Filter and go down to Sharpen and sharpen this image if you wanted to. For the first text layer, you want to right click on it, go to Blending Options and you want to give it a drop shadow. In the drop shadow, you want to set the color to black. You want to keep the distance on zero, have the angle on 115, and then you want to set the size to 40 and make sure that it is on this one right here. You want to press OK, and now you want to press Ctrl and J. So for the next one, you want to right click on it, go to blending options, go to drop shadow, and this one is going to be a little bit more different. You want to keep it on 100% for the opacity, just like last time. And then you want to go with 8% distance. And of course, you want to have the opacity on 100%. Press OK. You want to press Ctrl and J. Go to Blending Options again. Go down to Drop Shadow. And this time, you want to change the distance to 8. You want to put it to 11 for the size. You want to go down to quality and then in here you want to click on the down arrow, select this one as a template and then click on it. And then you want to click on the middle point, set this one to 13 and this one to 82. You want to press OK. As you can see from the text right now, it stands out a lot more. We're going to carry on and we're going to create a, another effect, which is the stroke. So to do this, once again, press Ctrl J. Okay, so for the last one, you want to go back to blending options. In the drop shadow, you want to turn this one down to 86%. You want to put the distance on 4. You want to put the size on 5. And then you want to go down to this option right here. You want to go back into this one. Click on this middle point, And then change the input to seven and this one to 84. Once you've done that, you can go to stroke, set this one to six, make sure it's on the outside. You want to go down and select the gradient option right here. In the gradient option, you want to go ahead and pick yourself 
this one right here, you can click on the first one. And the first color we're gonna set is 150900. Press OK. The middle one is going to be FF3000. And then for the last one, we're gonna set this one to FFA200. Go to opacity and turn this one to 66. Now we're just gonna go back in here and go to this one and set this one to 69 for the location, press OK and press OK again. For the texture of the text, we're gonna add in this glass effect and you want to drag this down. You want to hold shift and drag it to make it smaller. Put it on top of the text. You want to hold control and click on the icon for the layer, for the text layer and this will pretty much highlight the text. As you can see, you want to press Control J to separate it from this. You want to press Delete. And now for the texture, you want to set this one to hard light. Okay, hard light down here. And for the very last thing that we're gonna add is the stars. So you want to get yourself a picture of stars and drag this down into your project. You want to hold Shift and drag this down. What you want to do with the stars, you want to go to the eraser tool, click on it, and then you want to pretty much soften the edges. And now you can set it to Litten. And that is pretty much it. All you gotta do now is go to File, Save As, and then save it as a PSD, so you can always edit it. If you want it to be a thumbnail, you can go down to PNG, and then save it as a PNG. But anyway, leave a comment on what you thought of the video, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you all next time. Bye.